The new Gorillaz album is finally upon us. Cracker Island comes February 24th, 2023 from frequent band members Jamie Hewlett and Damon Albarn, the creators of this animated band. One of my favorite projects musically of all time. Pretty much everything Gorillaz does, I'm in for. Each time Gorillaz releases a new record, we quickly learn of its stylistic ideas, themes, and tone through the various singles dropped in the months leading up to the release. There's the group's magnum opus, Plastic Beach from 2010, that takes listeners on a journey through a plastic world. Our Plastic World, or Demon Days, which explores a wide range of political topics like gun control, the loss of a green world, and even consumerism chipping away at the hearts of people. Gorillaz has never shied away from tackling difficult topics through their trademark grooves and psychedelic production. Cracker Island intends to be another notch on that already prestigious belt. With five singles and their release date around the corner, let's explore the world that is being painted for Cracker Island. Of these five tracks, all but one have a very distinct style, have a very distinct tone, and have a very distinct thematic quality to them. Every Gorillaz project, or at least most of the Gorillaz projects, have a clear conceptual idea to them. On Cracker Island, it was born. The title track, Cracker Island, was first to drop back in June of 2022. It smashed onto the scene with its heavy 808s, alarm bell, synth hits, and rip-roaring bass line provided by the song's feature, Thundercat. Damon Albarn and Thundercat weave line after line together about made-up paradises, auto-tuned truths, and a cult's innate ability to trap people through learned behaviors. It's a punchy, incredibly catchy track that sets the stage for the animated Gorillaz characters to deal with some cult activity. It's a great track, and I was hyped to see where it was gonna go from here. Now, does it paint with fairly broad strokes about what cults are, how they operate, and what they do? Yeah, it does. It's pretty broad, it's pretty vague. It kind of reminded me of uh, this is America by Childish Gambino. Both kind of paint with these broad strokes. They don't say too much. The lyrics aren't dense, but it's pretty straightforward and you get what they're going for with a crazy instrumental to line it up, to make it catchy. And it's a catchy track, Cracker Island. But the second track is where things got interesting because New Gold is much less broad. It in fact zeroes in on what this album is and what it's trying to say. New Gold is a disco-inspired, funky track that takes jabs at modern zeitgeist. In one of the best verses so far on Cracker Island, Damon croons about social media being the new gold, calling to mind the gold rush of the 1850s that coincidentally had hundreds of thousands of people storming to California in the hunt for gold. Both New Gold and the Gold Rush are linked in this way. California, or more specifically Hollywood, plays a major role in the album's undertones, even name-dropping Silver Lake on the title track. It's clear that Damon has a pessimistic view of California life and culture through just these two tracks. I have left spiritually and physically left Hollywood, but I still always seem to sort of stay there, always stay there, and I always seem to be looking out over L.A which is an amazing, it's an amazing uh, perspective. But that sunrise just kills me every time when, it, when, when it's a strong one. Oh, God, it's just like... Albarn's verse on New Gold acts as a double-edged sword, though, critiquing Hollywood and social media at large, saying, New Gold, Fool's Gold, everything will disappear calling to our attention the digital world being nothing more than fool's gold. It does us no good and eventually will disappear as if it never existed in the first place. In, in the same verse, he says, someone's out there who's traveled far too many years to nowhere. Nothing here is ever real, which paints the picture of people maybe traveling to Hollywood and getting nowhere, doing nothing. Even Booty Brown and Tame Paula do a good job of focusing on this idea. Now, I think Booty Brown goes a little bit too far when he says, uh, trending on Twitter, what some of us live for. That's a bit much, you know? I got the point of what you're saying without you name-dropping Twitter, booty, but it's fine because there's some pretty fun bars that he has on this verse as well, like liposuction scheduled for granny, which is an allusion to the Hollywood lifestyle. People that live in Hollywood, they just are superficial, vapid, insipid people that want to look good. 
They just want to look good. And even Granny is getting liposuction to add some to her fanny. The third single, though, Baby Queen, is maybe the weirdest thing that is on this album so far, the weirdest thing that's been released, because it's a Damon Albarn story. It's not a gorilla story. It's something that happened personally to Damon Albarn. He talks about the time that the Princess of Thailand showed up to a blur thing, and then he talks about a dream he had of her growing up. It's very weird. I don't understand why it's here. But the fourth single brings us back to social media and Hollywood, and that's Skinny Ape. Skinny Ape, the fourth single, further criticizes social media over tight drum loops, guitar riffs, and large synth hits. Albarn wastes no time coming for the throat of online cancel culture with the first verse, saying, When all the kids have canceled time, will take my hands and pull me up again. Cheer me up and help me walk again. He holds a light up to mob mentality online and its ability to steamroll people's lives without due process. We can't always trust this new cult with its auto-tune truths. Eventually, the real truth comes out, and the same people who turn their backs on others will pull them up and help them walk again. Even more effective about Skinny Ape is what Damon sings about when the track breaks out the big guns in the second half. He seems to admit how alluring this new gold is, saying, I can balance on the highest tree. You can only see outlines of me. I can disappear or lighten up your day. Suggesting that he can be whoever he wants online, helping people or vanishing under its water, only showing the outline of who he is. It's almost like Damon envisioning what social media sounds like. It's kind of beautiful in a weird way, but it's violent, it's aggressive, it's loud, it's in your face, but there's something kind of enticing about it. And I love this track. Then we have Silent Running, the final single of the album, and another pretty strong track. This one is quite a bit more melancholy than all the other ones, though, o other than Baby Queen, which I, I'm struggling to count as a single for this album, because it, it just isn't. But Silent Running is quite a bit more melancholy. It's quite a bit s slower than the other three that are about cults. It feels like a piece of money. Instrumentally, it's significantly more melancholy with its off-kilter whistling and piano-backed singing. In the first verse, Albarn once again addresses the new cult of social media. I got so lost here, machine-assisted, I disappear. He laments about Hollywood once again in the chorus. It feels like I've been silent running through the infinite pages I've scrawled out, searching for a new world that waits on the sunrise. A short but effective chorus once again about feeling underwater in this new world. A new world that is as hollow as fools go. It's a good track, and I like silent running a lot. It's catchy, it hits pretty hard, and it's fun. It, it has a lot that it wants to say, and it brings up some kind of forlorning, interesting things that Damon Albarn seems to be fan fascinated with. It's not like Song Machine level brilliant in terms of production and, and structure and sound design and lyricism, and it's not Plastic Beach with its overtly perfectly done conceptual nature, nor is it Demon Days or The Fall or Now Now. It's very uniquely Cracker Island, and for what it is, it's good. It does hit you a little bit hard with its social media edge. It hits you a little bit hard with its ideas of culty behavior, stuff like that. Hollywood and the themes of being underwater are very prevalent on this record, and at times it goes a little bit too far. But I look forward to the rest of this album, and I'll be talking about it more in length, I'm sure, because we still got a, quite a few tracks to listen to. And based on the track titles, most of them seem to be in this vein as well. The Tired Influencer, Tormentia, Possession Island, as well as numerous others. But this album seems to be coming together pretty nicely, at least conceptually, about the modern age, culture, the vapid, insipid qualities of Hollywood of social media and how it kind of trickles into our lives and makes us robotic in a sense. And I, I've loved it so far. It hits hard, it's funky, it's dancey, and I think it's pretty solid. I, I think out of these singles, the best single is probably Cracker Island or Skinny Ape. I think those two are the strongest singles. New Gold is the, the most fun, the most replayable, and Silent Running is probably the best in terms of its message getting put across in a catchy way. Baby Queen just is there. I'd give these batch of singles probably a 7 or an 8 right now. I think they're strong. I don't think it's anything 
uh, world defining and baby queen I'm going to keep harping on because why is it there? But I'm looking forward to Cracker Island.